YouTube, this is SJM4306 back with another review. This time, this is something that actually would be very useful for my bench. So, I have a desktop computer under the bench. Uh, it has two USB ports, obviously, but um, they aren't powered when the, the desktop is asleep or off. There might be something I can do in the settings to change that. But anyway, they're, they're USB 2.0 ports. They don't supply a lot of current. So it's kind of annoying to charge things. And especially I have lights set up that are powered by USB, uh, like overhead swivel lights that I use for filming. And it's kind of hard. There's a power strip next to them, but you know, I'd have to plug in a bunch of, of um, like individual power bricks. So basically a company by the name of JMS uh, Wireless Tech, I believe it's something like that, uh, reached out to me and when, at first I thought, okay, it's just a USB power brick. Uh, but when I actually went to the sales page and looked at what the specifications for this, uh, this actually looked perfect for what I need. Basically, you know, a metric ton of USB ports that can each supply, you know, a decent amount of current. This guy retails for 35 bucks about currently. It's like 34.99 uh, as of the filming of this video. And there's some specifications here. Total can supply 60 watts through, I guess, you know, all of its ports added together up to 60 watts. Has a 10 watt uh, wireless charger on the top there. And it has a LCD display. I believe LED or LCD, uh, that'll actually tell you in real time how much current and voltage and what power it's giving out, et cetera, et cetera. And anyway, you can see this is actually pretty bare bones in terms of the packaging, uh, but that's probably good because that means that they spent the money not necessarily on making it look pretty, you know, the box, but on the item itself, hopefully. So we're just going to pop this guy open. And, oh wow, it's smaller than I thought it'd be. So yeah, pretty much all we get, as you'd expect, is just a power cord. And this is just a figure of eight cord. Let's just get this open. This actually looked a lot bigger in the pictures. I'm kind of surprised how small this is. So that'll be pretty interesting. It, that's probably a good thing. It doesn't take up too much desk space. And oh yeah, you have the uh, display here. I think that's just an LCD. I believe it's backlit. Yeah, it's about two inches. Um, it'll just say for each port, you know, what the voltage and current is. It does have a wireless charger on top and nice touch actually has like uh, rubber pads so that whatever you put on there doesn't slide around. And yeah, so we have our type C, I guess this is the quick charge port. So if I want to use that hot plate, I would have to get a type, uh, type A to type C cord. Um, it, comes with I believe a type C to type C so but this type C port can only do five volts out apparently which is a bit of a shame that that sort of that would have been more convenient if uh, the type C port could do multi voltage output and we got a bunch of what, what did it say like 2 amp or 2.4 amp regular USB ports and on the back we literally just have the um, AC input big rubber pad on the bottom so it does not move around and let's just oh i was going to grab my phone to show you the size comparison but i'm literally filming on my phone so i can't show you unfortunately but yeah my phone comparatively is about you know six inches wide so this is actually significantly smaller than my phone if i were to set my phone on top of it you wouldn't be able to see this from the top down yeah anyway enough waffle I'm going to plug this guy in and try to power a bunch of different things and um, see, you know, just how accurate the, the meter is. I do have one of those USB analyzer uh, sticks, so we'll compare measurements against them to see how accurate this is. You know, just run this through its paces. Okay, so I haven't done one of these floor videos in quite a while. I have a lot of stuff on my desk, and I don't feel like cleaning all of that off. It's stuff that I'm working on currently, so we're just going to make do with the floor right now. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I've used this for about a week, and it works as advertised. I mean, I, I wish I could show you the only phone that I have with wireless charging is what I'm currently filming with. But yeah, you, you 
put it on top here and it will start charging. It'll show you the, um, the voltage and the current. And I believe this goes up to about nine volts. So it does quick charge. So nine volts at, I think two amps. Uh, so this can fast charge over wireless. My phone does get a little warm though, uh, in its case. So if you are going to use a wireless charger, I would suggest taking the case off of your phone, uh, before doing so in order to, you know, uh, minimize the extra waste heat that's produced. But anyway, yeah, uh, wireless charging works just fine. Uh, it is a little bit temperamental on my phone. You have to get it lined up just perfect. Uh, it's the same with every phone. It's just inherent to the technology. Uh, there are other more advanced, more expensive chargers that uh, have multiple coils. So you, you just kind of roughly get it lined up and it'll select the best coil. Uh, but this one just appears to be a single coil right in the center. I do like that they added the rubber uh, so it doesn't like scratch my phone or anything like that. Uh, the case on the bottom and it just sort of pops down. So that was a good idea. Uh, I actually was using this as a bedside charger since I always have like tons of devices plugged into a power strip usually. And uh, for that, it works great with the exception of there's no way to like dim or turn off the backlight. So it is kind of bright at night when I turn off all the lights and is noticeable. I really would have liked to see maybe some kind of user interface where you could dim that down or even if I had a, a light sensor and it just auto dimmed uh, so that it wouldn't light up the entire room at night I, I would I would like that that's one of the small nitpicks that I think keep this from being perfect uh on the bench that's not really an issue honestly because I don't sleep in the same you know room as my bench uh but yeah if you were going to keep this as a bedside kind of charger doohickey with the wireless charger uh you might maybe want to put a um like a gel filter to make the screen as a whole dimmer so it doesn't keep you up at night Another thing that I noticed that was a bit of a letdown, the USB-C uh, doesn't do any of the uh, the QC modes. So unfortunately, what I originally uh, wanted this for was on my bench to be able to power uh, this guy. And this is a mini hot plate, and it does require the higher voltage and current modes of the quick charge uh, in order to actually you know, work at its higher power modes. Uh, so you can't use a type c to type c however there is a um a quick charge port here if you have a type c to type a uh, cord you can plug into that and this will work just fine on that uh, but the cord that this came with is a type c to type c and unfortunately this type c port does not support quick charge so that is a little bit of a letdown but yeah just get the right cord and then you can use devices like this I just wanted to demo uh, plugging in, you know, a number of random devices. I have a USB analyzer here uh, that we can use on at least the Type A ports to see uh, how accurate the measurements are. So this will tell you the the local uh, five volts, a little bit above five volts, which is actually a smart thing to do because you're going to get some drops on the cables, and we can look at the uh, currents that it's outputting. So anyway, I guess I'll just randomly start plugging things in. So we have a type C to type C cable here and this uh, game and watch also has type C so we can plug this in. Make sure that this is actually plugged in all the way. Okay, it's charging on the device. And here we're seeing this is port eight is uh, 0.2 amps currently and it does have an animated uh, icon one thing i did notice is if you put a, a very small device that doesn't pull a lot of current like for instance my uh wireless headphones these guys if you plug it in here it won't even recognize that it's charging it it will actually charge the headphones but there won't be any animated battery icon and it'll say zero amps uh, because i'm guessing the resolution on this is only in 0.1 amp increments so 100 milliamps and those headphones, these headphones must be charging at like less than 100 milliamps, so it cannot detect them, but it will charge just fine. So it's just a small uh, issue with kind of the measurement range. Anyway, yeah, this is charging just fine. Uh, we'll leave that. I have a another cord here for a Sansa player, so let's just plug this in as well. None of these devices particularly are going to pull a lot of power. Oh, another thing I, I realized, all the USB ports are kind of upside down. So if you have like one of those thumb drive MP3 players, the screen will be facing down. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's just sort of a limitation. This guy's only pulling 100 milliamps as well. Uh, the 
Game & Watch is pulling 200 now. Now we have something that should pull a little bit more. It, this is a, uh, a high-res Sony player. And I just realized this is not the cord for it. Uh, this is actually for a Vita, so let me grab my Vita instead. Okay. Yeah, for some reason, I don't know where the cord for this went. I hate Sony and their proprietary cords. Anyway, ran aside. I have my Vita now. Plug this in. I'm pretty sure the battery on this is pretty dead. So the icon came on. You can see it's orange there. And we're pulling 300 milliamps. The battery on this might be completely dead. So this might be the pre-charge. Let's see if it'll even turn on. No, it looks like the battery's so completely flat that uh, we're going to have to leave this a little while. Oh, there we go. Went up to about 0.9 amps, so... Yeah, the battery on this guy was pretty flat, that means. And if we did want to see, now this is what I was saying, if you want to see the, the current, uh, because the USB port's upside down, this analyzer has to be upside down as well, so we're going to have to flip it over to see. And here it says, yeah, 0.89, just short of 0.9. And you can see here it says it is, come on, there you go, one amp. So yeah, it's off by a little bit. Oh, now we're like 0.9. Yeah, so it's off by maybe about like 10%. Uh, this is only meant to be a rough indicator, what's written on the screen. It's not supposed to be super accurate. But one thing I really like is it shows you the power consumption of all the devices currently plugged in. So we're at 6.6 .6 amps right now. Uh, because two of the devices are only pulling like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 amps. Uh, so yeah, it's working. It's pulling. I, I've only ever tried like two smartphones, so about, you know, 10, 15 watts at a time max. And it handles that just fine. Supposedly, this will handle up to 60 watts. Uh, looking at the cord, if I go up a little bit, it does seem kind of thin. And it's there's only a, it's a figure eight lead, so there's, there's no grounding as well so i could see this going up to like 40 watts something like that uh, 60 might be pushing it honestly if you have all all the plugs populated um that might push uh up to 60 watts but yeah i, I would only really trust this to like maybe 40 watts something like that you, you guys have to kind of figure that if it looks like it can be opened i'm gonna try to open it during a review so we're just gonna unplug this Improvements, I would really like to see, you know, a way to dim either auto or manual with the button, the LCD, and maybe even turn off the backlight completely if you want to. Uh, one thing I forgot to notice that I thought was a, a unique coincidence that I liked, uh, all the ports kind of light up because of the backlight. So when it's in the dark, you easily plug in anything to the charging ports because you could see them. Uh, there's just kind of some backlight spill. So I thought that was a pretty neat coincidence. Probably not intentional, but yeah, I would like to have seen the ports be facing upright. Um, they're upside down. Uh, it's, it's not a deal breaker, but it would have been nice. Uh, also, if it had the ability to maybe look a button next to each, uh, you can turn each port individually on and off. That would have been nice. Not a deal breaker. But then again, you can always unplug the, the cord. Anyway, uh, let's see if we can crack this open. I don't believe that there are any screws uh, underneath this pad it just looks like maybe there are clips all the way around so i'm gonna pry at the front and i want to see exactly what's inside and see if the internal supply could really supply that uh 60 watts that they specified if that's reasonable or if they over specified the capability of this so give me one second i'm gonna pry all around and see if i can get in here and see what the quality of the internal circuitry is okay <laughs> it took me like half an hour prying with a Pretty sharp flat head and this little part of my um, my pocket knife here that's blunt but it's like very thin and strong and I basically use this uh, to get underneath all the the little plastic tabs and push them in so I could pop it out one point at a time and when I got all three sides done then the top just sort of came out now to open the gap a little wider I actually had to use the uh the blade part of my pocket knife very carefully mind you so i don't slice my finger like i did uh, for you know my pinky uh doing something else with a sharp object so i would actually not advise opening uh one of these if you get one 
uh, unless you're super careful so that you don't hurt yourself. Anyway, um, that's why I won't go through this entire trouble is so that you guys don't have to. Anyway, uh, we can pull out the supply now. And hopefully you can see it's about the size and it looks like power rating of a laptop supply. Um, you can see this honking huge uh, DC link cap here. The AC um, goes into a plug right here from the... Uh, the you know, figure of eight lead connector in the back there. The wires look mm, a little thin, um, so maybe that might limit the total power capability of this. Uh, there is lots of Celastic uh, sticking this um, insulator down. So at least they do uh, provide, you know, decent insulation between the high voltage bits and all this on this lower side is low voltage. Uh, we have the uh, transformer in there. And we have a plate which is undoubtedly going to be mounting the um, the diode and the uh, the MOSFET for the switching of the transformer. We can see uh, more large low ESR caps on the secondary side, so that's going to be the five volt. And we have at the very top, uh, Celastic down is sorry about that. You might not be able to see is the uh, the wireless charger, and it looks like. Uh, the coil is mounted, you know, directly on, on the other side of the plastic here. And it looks like there's some large electrolytic capacitors and some active components on that board. Uh, yeah, this is kind of as good as I can get it um, without destroying it and pulling this apart completely. Uh, so, yeah. And you can see all those stupid little clips that I had to defeat to get into it. So yeah, uh, for manufacturing, I understand why they do this. Because there's no screws, it just snaps together, and it's cheap and it's easy. Uh, but for serviceability, uh, this is pretty much unserviceable, unfortunately. Uh, but uh, once you get into it, the whole point was I wanted to see what the quality of the board inside and everything was. Um, we can see a, a QFP chip in here, and that's going to be... Uh, probably driving the, the LCD. You can see a lot of those traces go over to the LCD itself on either side. Um, so that might actually be the LCD driver. This might be the main chip then. There are a lot of test pads in here. Uh, let's see if I can read any of them. Ground, data, yeah. So there's some kind of serial control to the LCD driver. Yeah, this must be the main chip. Uh, a lot of passives all around it as well. And we have another, looks like a power... Uh, what is this? Looks like a SOIC. Yeah, and there's like a thermal pad underneath it and a inductor. So that's probably maybe for local supply that maybe is handling the uh, the Type C um, power, something like that. You know, a lot of grounding points for each of the uh, the USB ports. Uh, it looks like they each have probably either protection or current limiting devices right next to them. Um, they're just labeled U, so I can't tell much from that. And I can't read the part numbers off uh, because it doesn't look like they have any. <laughs> might have been scrubbed off, or it might just be so small I can't read it without a microscope. Anyway, uh, beyond that, we have... Looks like the Type-C port is soldered um, right here. Another protection circuit. Yeah, so everything... It seems uh, each protection chip handles two uh, USB ports. Um, and we have nice beefy kind of actually nicely siliconed wires going over to the main power supply and these guys are obviously going to be the main this one is probably going up to the um, the wireless converter but these two are coming from the main uh, 5.25 volt supply and yeah you can see there's some 50 ohm uh, resistors those are probably for the the current shunt measurement uh, and you know they're down here as well so that's likely what it's using to measure. I will unscrew. Uh, there's like six screws. Let's just pull that off real quick and see exactly what's underneath. Give me a second to grab a screwdriver. Okay, so this is unscrewed. I forgot to mention there is a unpopulated ship down here. I wonder what, what that exactly is doing. Um, anyway, let's just see if we can pry this off. There we go. And we have the backlight. It's just, you know, this white light box basically here with two wires going over so if i did want to add um you know ability to turn that on or off it, it'd be easy enough once you're inside the unit but yeah that's the problem trying to get inside of this without destroying the whole thing is kind of difficult so yeah all the ports are right angle so yeah that's one thing like i said i would have preferred the ports to be upside down from this orientation so that 
certain devices plugged in face up, uh, namely like my USB analyzer. Uh, that would have been really super easy to reroute and just rotate the ports and reroute them. Uh, so that is something that they could change if they wanted to. But yeah, there's really not that much on the front of this board. There's nothing under the chip. There's just some foam to mount the backlight. Overall, half decent quality. Uh, there are some stray bits of solder that I would prefer that they were cleaned up at the factory. They could potentially fall off and short something over time uh, of being used just thermal um, expansion and contraction could cause uh, stray bits of solder balls and whatnot during the reflow process to short some other chip uh, later down the line. So uh, cleaning could definitely do um, a little bit of work. But in terms of like the layout, I don't see anything like uh, really wrong with any of this. The, uh, the supply looks pretty well made. Uh, components, I can't see the um, the brand name on the caps or anything like that. They are low ESR caps, but yeah, I don't know. They're not brand name caps. Uh, so component quality might be questionable um, long term. But in terms of, you know, me running this at a good like 30 watts or so, got a little warm, nothing like super hot to be worried about. Uh, the only thing that, like I said, some usability things could be improved uh, namely with dimming the backlight, uh, rotating the USB port so that they're facing kind of upright, so to speak. Uh, I would like to see this a little easier to open, um, even if they had to add screws and add a adhesive faceplate to it. Uh, that would be much, much better if you ever had to open this to service it uh, versus these clips, which are impossible to open. Or not impossible, but very difficult. And I, I left some scratch marks on the case and whatnot. It was kind of inevitable getting these off. Overall, this is a pretty well-designed product. And for 30 bucks, um, even if it can't do the full 60 watts, um, I've tested this up to about 30, like I said, watts uh, total. That's plenty enough for me. Uh, if we're using it to charge like random small USB devices. Uh, and this is a lot more convenient, I gotta say, than using individual power bricks, like USB uh, bricks on a power strip, uh, which is currently how, you know, before I had this, uh, that's generally how I, I charge things on my bench. Uh, but like I said, I would have liked to see in maybe individual uh, power controls. So like a, a button that lets you turn on and off each a USB port individually. That would have been really cool. So I can leave things plugged in and just turn it on when I want to turn on my USB iron or hot uh, reflow plate uh, without having to plug and unplug things, uh, you know, unnecessarily putting strain on the ports and, and cords and whatnot. So just being careful before I clip it back together. Yeah, I'm going to plug this in, make sure it still turns on that I didn't break any of the wires. So give me one sec on that. Okay, and we are all back together now. Um, it was kind of actually hard getting it back together as well. Uh, the tabs yet to line up, and there's like an inner lip on the front case here that has to slot in. And I think maybe one or two of the clips on the bottom didn't quite go back together, so it's a bit, how are you doing? Anyway, uh, yeah, in terms of the device itself, I think it's actually pretty good value uh, for what you're getting, just having like a a base station that you can leave on your um, your bedside countertop or whatever and charge tons of devices uh, simultaneously. Uh, it's pretty versatile. I like the fact that it doesn't have a separate power brick. It uh, just plugs straight into the wall with a standard cord so you can replace that with any length or thickness cord that you want. Uh, and yeah, it just seems to work. So I'm pretty happy with this. This is actually, I think, a pretty decent deal at around you know 35 bucks as of the filming of this video. Price may or may not go up or down uh, depending on supply or if there's any sales. Anyway, I will have a, a sales link down below if you guys are interested in picking up something like this. This, I think, is actually a really good idea for a bench setup, especially if you have a lot of um, like USB test equipment. Uh, instead of having to keep switching out, have a million power USB power bricks plugged into a, a um, like an extension cord, I think this could definitely save you a lot of clutter on your desktop. Uh, one thing is, if you're going to be placing this on the wall, uh, you might want to actually spring for a right angle uh, figure eight lead uh, so that it's not sticking out so far in the back, so you could put this right up against the wall. I think that would be an improvement. I am going to actually not use this in my bedroom, but um, mount this somewhere on the pegboard on my wall 
uh, behind my my bench so I can actually use this like I said for powering all my uh, USB test equipment and whatnot uh, that would actually be an interesting thing if they could combine this with a USB hub and have all these USB ports uh, go to like a, um, a USB type B in the back and plug a computer into this. Then it could do, pull double duty as both the USB hub and charging all your devices. I think that would make this perfect. Uh, for something like that, I'd be willing to pay, you know, like up to a hundred bucks or something like that. If it can charge, you know, all my devices at like, you know, 60 or a hundred watts and act as a eight port USB hub. That would be fantastic. But anyway, as is, I think 35 bucks is a, a pretty uh, decent amount to pay for something like this. A port charger, wireless. Um, don't know how much I'm gonna end up using the wireless on my bench, but it's there if I ever need it, so whatevs. But like I said, I probably wouldn't push this you know, to the full 60 watt uh, capability. I'm sure it could. Uh, it might start getting toasty in, in the plastic enclosure since there's no ventilation slots or anything. So I, I would probably keep this around to like 40 watts max um, just to be safe. But anyway, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.